Hi, Northside family. Welcome to week two of our All Church Study Resilient. This week, we are talking about how a resilient disciple knows Jesus, not just knows about him. Some of you might be thinking, well, what's the difference? Here's how I like to describe it. Knowing about Jesus means you know some facts. For example, you probably know that he died on a cross and rose three days later. You might also know that he was a powerful teacher and you might know he had 12 disciples. You might know he was born to a virgin named Mary and that Jesus is the son of God. I could keep going, but I think you understand what I'm talking about. You know a lot of fun facts about Jesus, but knowing Jesus might look more like this. You know what it feels like to put your full faith and trust in Jesus, and it has given you a completely unexplainable peace you've never had before. Knowing Jesus looks like talking to him about everything good and bad. Knowing Jesus looks like asking him what direction he wants you to go in in your career, and you want to do what is holy and pleasing to him, not what is holy and pleasing to you. Knowing Jesus looks like following him and his lead completely. Knowing Jesus means having a relationship with him, not just knowing facts about him. And when you know Jesus, something in you changes in ways that are truly unexplainable and all you can do is point to your savior. Let me put it another way that might feel a little more applicable to today. Think about a celebrity you like or maybe someone you follow on Instagram or TikTok. You don't actually know them, you know of them. If you two passed each other on the street, you would recognize them, but they more than likely would have no idea who you are. You might know some facts about their life, like where they live, their favorite food, but you probably don't know what their biggest internal struggle is or what it's like to get into an argument with that person and then experience forgiveness from them. You know about them, you just don't really know them, especially on social media, because really 99% of people just put their happy and good stuff out there. And really, this is our big idea today, really knowing Jesus, not just stuff about him, and that when you know him, you change. So today we're gonna be in 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy is in the New Testament and is a letter written by Paul to Timothy. Some of the main themes in this book of the Bible are things like tips from Paul about ministering to the church and Paul encouraging Timothy despite the daunting work ahead of him with being in Ephesus. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and dive in. We are gonna be in 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 17. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the keen, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So in these passages, Paul is describing for us what his life was like before Jesus. He was a blasphemer, a persecutor, and overall just a really violent man. But now since Jesus, Paul has experienced Jesus' mercy and grace when Paul most definitely did not deserve that. And now his life looks different. Change happened to Paul because Paul got to know Jesus and his grace and mercy. Paul was once a persecutor and now he's not. The point here is this, when we get to really know Jesus, change happens in our lives. When we get to know who Jesus really is and we welcome him into our hearts, we simply cannot help it, but change will overflow into our lives. This change doesn't mean life gets easier or we go without hardships or suffering. This change means we can walk in this life knowing that our ultimate creator is with us and is for us. And that causes us to worship him in new ways. While change might look a little different in everyone's life, one thing is for certain. Sometimes we need help hearing from our God. Our world is so loud and hearing him can be such a challenge. And I know I've experienced this in my own life, so I'm certain you probably have too. So how can we hear God in this really busy world in order to listen for the change we might need next in our lives? So let's go ahead and get practical. So today we're gonna to talk about fasting. Fasting was very, very common during the Old and New Testament days, but now it's definitely not as common as it used to be. Because of that, some of us might be thinking or wondering why and how should I fast? Here's the why behind it. We fast to get closer to God and to find out what we are really craving at the root of our soul. 
We were designed to crave God, but a lot of time our sin gets in the way and we end up craving other things that aren't God. Fasting helps bring whatever that might be to the surface. This is hugely beneficial because we can find out what is getting in the way of us getting closer to God. And this could also help us with our best next steps of faith, whatever that looks like for us. This can help us hear God in the busyness of life. Additionally, you will see in your study guide, we listed eight different reasons on why you should fast. There's a lot of reasons, and we don't have time to cover all of them in this video, but the fact that there are that many reasons to fast fully illustrates that everyone might have a slightly different reason for fasting, and they are all good and holy reasons. You might be fasting because you're in mourning, but your friend who is also fasting is doing it because they are trying to discover the Lord's will for what is next for them. So the bottom line is you're not going to fast for eight different reasons total. When fasting, your goal is to pick one of those eight reasons. Or maybe there's even a reason we didn't even list that's been super heavy on your heart and that's totally perfect. Go with whatever reason God has put on your heart for your fasting. But from personal experience, I really recommend you pick one reason before you start your fast. It will make your fasting time so much more intentional and purposeful. Now the how. The how can look a little different for everyone, and we have an 11-step process in your study guide to help determine how you can fast. And I know 11 steps sounds like a lot, but we're going to talk about it, and I think you will quickly see how simple this can be. So, step one, select a spiritual purpose. We just talked about how you need to know your why before you start. Step two, determine the length of your fast. You could do 24 hours or you could start slow and just do the morning, or maybe you're ready for a multi-day fast. Step three, decide on the type of fast. Maybe for a medical reason you can't give up food, but you could fast from social media or watching TV. Step four, communicate to those who need to know. Maybe just start off with picking one person so they are aware and can be praying for you. But if you are choosing to do this as a group, then your whole group will know and you'll have each other to lean on. Step five, make a specific commitment to complete the fast. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Step six, begin your fast with prayer and repentance. Step seven, while you're fasting, fill your heart with scripture. Basically, during the times when you were supposed to be eating or you would normally get on social media, if you gave up social media, read scripture instead. Step eight, pray passionately and often during your fast. Step nine, seek solitude and silence. Find times to get away from everyone. This is something that Jesus modeled for us, so therefore it's very important during your fast. Step 10, when you start to break your fast, eat something light and healthy so you don't feel gross after you just spent beautiful time with God. You will thank yourself later, I promise. And finally, step 11, know that God is pleased. Voluntarily giving something up to spend more time with our Heavenly Father is something He loves to see because He wants to spend time with you so that way you know Jesus and not just about Him. You spend intentional time with Him. So, as you reflect on what it means to really know Jesus, think about what is the next step you need to take when it comes to fasting to get to know Jesus better. Maybe it's simply, I need to fast for the first time. Or maybe it's, I need to be more intentional about my fasting. Discuss as a group or journal about it. But that is all I have for us today, and happy fasting.